Welcome to Wednesday Worship Tonight. We are finishing up our confirmation creation theme for October, and we will be focusing on the Gospel of John, Chapter 1. And then I wanted to remind everybody that next week, Wednesday, our first Wednesday in November, we will have in-person worship at 5.30, so feel free to join us for that. Now I invite you to join in on our gathering song, Cornerstone. Let us pray. Holy Lord, you created all that is. Your Son, Jesus, redeems it, and the Holy Spirit sustains it. Make us instruments of creation so that we may work with you, not against you, to create a better world for all. Help us to share your love and to love one another better. Let your light so shine within us to bring peace and support to sustain those around us. In your everlasting name we pray. Amen. Tonight our Bible reading is from the Gospel of John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join in our next song, Lord, I Need You. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here I find my rest. Without you I fall apart, you're the one 
that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found, is where you are. Where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Teach my song to rise to you. When temptation comes my way, when I cannot stand or fall on you, Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need For many people, today's reading throws a loop in their understanding of creation. And it also might make us think a little harder on what the Trinity means. God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. John, who wrote this gospel, starts with this very complex prologue. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Where else have we heard those first three words, in the beginning? Well, let's look back at Genesis 1, where it starts. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you see the parallel now? John was emphasizing that parallel with his prologue, reminding us that God has no beginning and that God was already there when everything else began, because God made everything. Now we see something else. In the beginning was the word with word capitalized. That tells us it's probably pretty significant. Now, one of my favorite Christian writers, Patsy Claremont, who is the short spitfire of a woman full of faith, sass, and never ending energy said, oh, the nurturing and life-giving power of well-placed words, which made me think of how important words are to us. After my grandma BJ passed away, my family decided to gift me with her Bible. It's a gift that I treasure. Her Bible isn't super fancy or elegant. It's just a standard Bible with a brown cover. But my favorite part about it, when I look through it, I come across notes in her handwriting, thoughts scribbled in the margin, other verses or passages in the Bible underlined. 
Sometimes it's just one simple word that she must have felt was important enough to underline and add a note about it. These notes of hers mean so much to me. One day I came across a note of hers in the margin where she wrote, we are saved through faith. She had summed up a whole complex chapter with these very simple words, and they mean the world to me. I've gone back to that place in her Bible to read those words so many times, so much so that I ordered a necklace with those words in her handwriting engraved on it so that I could keep it close to my heart. So getting back to today's passage, John too must have understood how important and significant words are. Let's look at the rest of verses one and two. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. There's a big clue right there. I know you're all jumping ahead to tell me the answer because that helps us make so much more sense of it. John is saying Jesus is the word. So if you read that and put Jesus in place of the word, in the beginning was Jesus. Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. Now I like to remind my confirmation students, when you don't always know the answer, it's usually Jesus. So go ahead and answer Jesus. Yes, this passage is telling us that in the beginning, before there was anything else, there was just God but also that there was someone with God and this someone was God himself. We know that this verse is talking about Jesus and this verse helps us learn a crucial truth about Jesus. Jesus is God himself and he always has been. He is fully God and Jesus existed before creation. Now we can see why this passage echoes the very first passage in the Bible. This emphasis on Jesus being God and being present before God created the heavens and the earth. That's something that, G that John wanted to point out. The next part of the passage calls Jesus the word of life. Now you can tell how significant word and life are to John. So to understand this a little better, I looked back at chapter one of Genesis again. How did God create in that story of creation? God spoke life into being. John is revealing how important Jesus is by calling him word to reflect on how powerful words from God are. God spoke and said, let there be light, and there was light. God spoke life into being. That can only happen with the almighty power of God's word. Further in this passage, it says the word became flesh. That's another time that John is trying to tell us that Jesus is God, but God incarnate, God became flesh. Jesus became flesh and lived among us. This is Jesus as the revelation of God in our human world. Jesus became a baby in our world. He was born as a baby who would grow up to be our savior, the one sent by God to rescue his people. So Jesus is the word of God with all of the power that, of God that comes with it. Words are so important and meaningful. God, who is also an apostle of Jesus, wrote about his relationship with Jesus throughout the whole gospel. He wrote about what he and the other followers of Jesus witnessed and experienced. Jesus as a real human. Jesus as flesh and blood, just like us. But also, he emphasized Jesus as the word of God to remind us how important understanding the embodiment of God is. Jesus was God in human form who was there in the beginning and everything was created through him. Jesus is the word because he is everything that God wants to say to us. And remember because the word Jesus, became flesh and died for our sins, it is through Jesus, the word of life, that God gives us eternal life. Amen.
Let us join together in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our sending for today, as we are blessed by God, let us be a blessing to others. Thanks be to God.